Well, we're not in the Terminator today. What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today I have my wife's 1999 Mustang GT two valve automatic and I just took it to get inspected so it's a great opportunity to talk about this car and talk about is this car still worth it in 2022. Now one of my previous videos was all about my 2004 Cobra which is I have to say completely a different car on many many levels. This car, a little history on it, we bought this in 2000, it was a couple of months old, and we kept it mostly stock. Even 22 years later, all it has is bullet suspension parts, uh, like Takiko Blues, OEM bullet springs. It's got an exhaust on it, a uh, Mac catback with a Bassani X pipe with cats. Uh, it sounds really good, stock gears, a couple of minor touches, a uh, air raid cold air kit. It's probably making 10 horsepower than it did brand new, which was 260 at the crank. At the time when we bought it, it was the brand new Mustang, and it was about a second faster than Friends 96 to 98 cars, which is really cool. Uh, this car ran a best of 13.99 at Cecil County Dragway in Maryland, as is, and at English Town, rest in peace, it used to do consistent low, low, low 14s. So it's a solid car, especially for the time. It was a it was a pretty fast Mustang. Now. Like I said, 22 years later, the two valve often gets ragged on by people. Now, this car has just under 61,000 miles. It's hanging on to 60,000 right now. And I have to tell you, it drives like a brand new car. The difference between the Cobra is night and day. This is nowhere near as fast as the Cobra. It doesn't ride as rough as the Cobra, but the Cobra does have aftermarket suspension. Uh, the automatic makes it a pleasure to drive in traffic. And uh, it's just, it feels super, super tight. So this is an example of a well-kept two valve. Now you're gonna have your clapped out cars left and right, of course. But when at the time I made the video, I think a car like this was going for, on the high side, about $5,000. And I remember saying, are they gonna go up in value? Well, we're now at a point where a well taken care of two valve car even around the 100,000 mile mark is still asking eight to $10,000. I've seen some low mileage examples asking more than that. And the question is, is it worth it? This is a fun car. I just got it inspected and the, the guy who, who did it backed it out and said, this is a really nice car. And it really is. You're not gonna blow away the newest crop of muscle cars with it. You're just not, it doesn't have that level of power. It does still have that same kind of tactile feel that my Terminator f does, that it feels very, very connected to the road, very, I hate to say, old muscle car feel. But it does, it has a classic muscle feel to it. Even with the automatic, and this is actually not a bad automatic, the 4R70W, is it a nice car? Yes. Is it a fun car? Yes, absolutely it's a fun car. Is it a race car? I don't know. I mean, I, I went through stages where I was thinking about putting a positive displacement blower on this, like a Whipple or a Kenny Bell. Um, for a brief second, I was thinking about a centrifugal like a Vortec. I was even thinking about four valve swapping it with a Mach 1 engine. Am I glad I didn't? Kind of. I kind of like the charm of the two valve, and some say that the two valve is one of the best sounding uh, engines that Ford ever produced. So even at a, let's say a high 13, very high 13 second, low 13 second car. It is a nice car to cruise. It has classic styling. The new edge styling never gets old. A lot of people love these cars and they kind of use Terminator parts to make them look even better, which is really cool. This car looks pretty much stock. It's got a, a 2001 to 2004 hood scoop on it. It's got 2001 bullet wheels on it. It's got uh, bullet for calipers, so it's, it's a, it's a nice looking car. I tried to go for a classic look. What's this car worth? I don't know, a car is worth whatever somebody wants to pay, I guess. I, I mean, this car's gotta be worth 
at least ten thousand dollars. Now I said that to my wife, and she's not she's not interested in selling, which is so ironic. Um, she loves this car, and she would rather it sit in the garage, and you know I start it up every couple of weeks, take it for a quick blast, but. We really don't put much, much mileage on this car ever since I got the Terminator. So if you were to buy one of these cars, let's say for $10,000, is it worth it 2022? <laughs> it depends on what you're looking for. If this car brings you the nostalgia of a time gone by with the two-valve Mustang and the new edge body style, then yeah. I mean, I could drive this car to Florida from New York tomorrow. I, I have total confidence. It drives beautiful, it rides great, AC works. It's a modern-ish car, to me at least. Um, it doesn't have all the modern stuff like heated and air cool, air, and air conditioning seats, stuff like that. But to someone like me, this is, this is fine. I, I'm very comfortable in this car. I'm probably more comfortable in this car than in an S550. That might be because of nostalgia and, uh, you know, uh, just familiarity, for lack of a better word. They are good first Mustangs in that if you can find one that's in decent shape and even with high mileage, I mean, this 4.62 valve was, remember, used in police cars and uh, taxi cabs. So as a result, they do last a long time as long as they're maintained. So even if you find one with 150,000 miles and you can get it for a decent price, it's a nice Mustang to have as your first Mustang GT. The aftermarket support is there. It's, it'll be a great sound. You can hang out at all the Mustang Club shows and whatnot with it. It might be a good kind of a, a way in for you. If you're going to go for a higher level model, like, well, let's say like this, like this GT that has lower mileage, that's in much, much better shape, that's going to be a much higher cost of admission, so to speak. So in my opinion, this is still a great car in 2022, as long as you understand what it's, what it's kind of made for. It's not going to be able to take on the latest cars. It's not going to be able to go against your, your chargers. Sounds so good. It's not going to go again. Be able to go against your challengers and your uh, your coyotes, but well, I mean, it could if you put a lot of money into it. But it's just it's a nice car. You can cruise out with your family. It's got room for four. Yeah, I mean, personally, I would recommend the new Edge GT. I believe that the prices will continue to go up simply because the same reason as the Fox bodies. These are getting tougher to find in really good shape. These are getting, these are getting that nostalgia-ness, for lack of a better word, that the uh, you know the Fox Body did to people. The Fox Body has become the coveted car, and cars that were worth two grand, you know, ten years ago, are now worth ten grand, you know, and just simply because they are Fox Body Mustangs. So these new edges, I believe, will continue to rise, and it's been two years, and they have done that. I think it's a solid buy in 2022, given what you want to use it for. If you're looking to break into the Mustang game, it still sounds so good. If you're looking to break into the Mustang scene, it's a relatively inexpensive way to get in if you can find one that has a little bit more mileage. If you want to find one with low mileage, it's a great car to take to shows because people do actually appreciate these cars more than you think because this car is a 99, this car is 23 years old at the time of this video, and even the 04 is still going to be 18 years old. So they are kind of classic cars. So I'd love to know what you think. I want to hear your feedback. Did I get this one right? Do you agree with me? Do you think it's just a complete waste of money? I don't know. You're entitled to your opinion and I certainly want to hear it. So do me a favor, leave a comment down below and let me know your thoughts. And I thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one.